queries, then then it doesn't make sense. And um, it only only makes sense when the computation is is the, the queries are having a lot of computation and they are reading a small amount of data. So we can see that on demand doesn't make sense because they can shift to the capacity based model and you can see they will save a lot of money more than a half uh, because it will be a little bit more than 100k if they put everything into a reservation and usually this is a, a great idea for larger uh, companies who are using BigQuery heavily. But as you can see, and this is why I'm talking about the on-demand pricing model as well, and not only about the capacity-based model, that in this specific example, the best scenario would be if customer is mixing up to the two models. Because you can say that uh, you can check uh, the cost based on a project, or we also recommend to check it on an account label basis because you can have different type of workloads and queries or pipelines, that it may make sense to shift from the reservation to, uh, to on-demand or other way around. So in this case, this is a, again, this is a real use case. We checked uh, what would be the best scenario and, and they can lower the cost to 76K uh, on a monthly basis if they are using the reservation for the projects where they have uh, a lot of data there and they can use the on demand one if if it um, if if it's um, if it's not that uh, big data behind that because it's cheaper in that case so this is something that i recommend here that always check that how many slots are consuming your uh, BigQuery jobs, at least on a project level, and, and calculate that what would be the cost for the reservations or for the on-demand price and check that which one does it make sense to you. Uh, you can use the information schema in BigQuery to be able to, to see what are your jobs and how many data are they reading or how many slots are they using. So this is the, the challenge one. But before we jump into the second challenge, what I wanted to talk today, uh, let's stop a little bit and see how the autoscaler works. Because if you are on the, on, on, on the capacity-based model and you are using reservations, you have, let's say, two type of things what you can do. You can set the baseline. Uh, slots. So, how many slots you want to be, uh, you want to allocate all of the time, and you can also set the maximum slot that that BigQuery Autoscaler can scale up until your setting, for instance, to two two thousand uh, slots, and based on the demand behind, uh, it will scale up and it will scale down, and you are paying for the 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 slots. Um, there and how it works. So there are a couple of limitations there because one thing is that it, it can scale up and down by increments of 50 slots. So this is actually a good news compared to the previous version because earlier it was 100 uh, and now it can scale up by 50. So it can be more precise uh, on that sense. And uh, the other limitation is that once it scales up to, I don't know, 1,000, even if you are using it for, let's say, 10 seconds, you have to pay for it at least 60 seconds. So this is, this is uh, actually quite a big limitation. I will show you quickly why I think this is a limitation. And another thing what we see sometimes that it scales up too eagerly, which can be a good thing because if you have um, critical pipelines that you have to run quickly and, and, and the duration is important for you, for your pipelines, then, then uh, BigQuery Autoscaler can scale up on a second basis. 
But on the other hand, we also see that sometimes it scales down too slowly. Let me show you uh, a couple of examples. Because uh, this is a specific um, interval. And here you can see every second of the BigQuery auto scalar and the different settings. And what you can see here, the, this, this spiky line is the usage. So if we are adding up all of the jobs that you are having um, in the background, then you can see how many slots the BigQuery jobs needed. Um, and here you can see that the, with the red, that what was the, the mock slot setting. So in this example, it was around 10,000 slots. And with the blue line, you can see that how many slots were there available based on the auto scaler. And the bad news is that you are paying based on the slots that, uh, that are available at the different uh, seconds based on the auto scaler. So you are paying based on the blue line. But here you can see that there are some periods, for instance, here, uh, where the gap between how many slots you need and how many slots are available, again, uh, the slots that you are paying for, um, there are a big difference. And, and this, is, this is not that good thing because uh, you are not using it, but you are paying for it. Let me show you another example. This is, this is also a good example that um, the, slots are, the slots peaked at 400 in this example. Uh, they went down. And they went up again a little bit. And basically here, there is still a gap. And, and at that point, it, uh, it scaled down. So here, there isn't any, um, any jobs actually in the background. And for BigQuery, it took, I don't know, more than, uh, more than two, almost two minutes uh, to scale down. So again, this is also um, also uh, the area that you are paying for and you are not using. So those, those are the, the parts where waste happens.